Are you overpaying on your property taxes? Many homeowners are, and OwnWell can help. OwnWell's team of local tax experts combine cutting-edge technology and deep expertise to help you appeal your property taxes at no upfront cost. You pay only if you save. That's OwnWell's savings or free guarantee. Join hundreds of thousands of homeowners who are saving money on property taxes with OwnWell. Sign up in less than three minutes at OwnWell.com. That's O-W-N-W-E-L-L.com. Coming up on this episode of DL Weekly, exciting news for Disney Live Entertainment, a new location to offer dining packages. Changes to security bag check, new ways to celebrate Pixar Fest, we talk with Debbie from Designer Park Co., and more. DL Weekly starts now. Hello, everyone. Welcome aboard the DL Weekly podcast. Please lower your head and watch your step while boarding. If this is your first time listening, we hope you'll check out our website at dlweekly.net. If you have more time to spend, becoming an official weekly tier at dlweekly.net slash support is an especially good value. Thanks for traveling with us today, and we hope you have a happy and memorable listen to this week's episode. Hello and welcome to this episode of DL Weekly for the week of May 22nd, 2024. I'm Teresa Urban. And filling in for Tag, I'm Vern Weisensell. Well, this week we would like to thank everyone that supports the show, but we would like to give a special shout out to Evelyn C. for increasing your support and also to Kristen S., Mandy B. and Anna T. for your continued support. If you would like to help support the show to make sure we can keep bringing you the latest news, information, discussion, and interviews about Disneyland, head on over to dlweekly.net slash support. Now let's get to the news. Well, just ahead of the return of Fantasmic this weekend, Rancho is joining the lineup for dining packages. This package includes a three-course lunch or dinner plus a voucher for a reserve viewing section to see the show. Pricing is $35 for adults and $25 for children. I think that is delightful. I Okay, so I had already booked... The, all of us, the group of us, mm. a dining reservation for Blue Bayou to do the Fantasmic dining package because, well, we love Fantasmic. Yes. And if you're going to do Blue Bayou, the Fantasmic dining package, in my opinion, is the way to do it. We've because you done get, it before. It was delightful. Yeah, because you get mm. that wonderful meal plus like front and center yes. reserve seating. And really, for what a meal costs at Blue Bayou, the dining package isn't like crazy expensive when you compare just what you just the meal part so yes but now now i'm kind of tempted to to book us also for to see if there's openings to also book rancho because i really want to see what the difference is because sure. blue bayou is like the premier option riverbell's kind of the middle but uh-huh. rancho is the the more it's the more cost effective of the three options sure. that are there so i'm curious what the difference is with the viewing areas. Right. And you're missing the most important point. Tacos. Tacos. Plus, <laughs> yes, tacos. Which brings us to the menu. So the menu, oh, we don't know the full, full menu yet because Fantasmic is not back yet. But we do know that it will include options on the adult menu for things like a chili verde riblet, sweet and spicy shrimp tacos, a plant-based potato taco dish, and sweet and savory carne asada. All of the entrees include a radish slaw, cilantro, lime, rice, Korean potato salad, refried beans, cortadillo, and a fountain beverage. Yum! None of those sound like a bad option to me. No, they're delightful. I mean, I'm sorry, take that back. I am not a seafood person, so perhaps the shrimp tacos would be a pass for me. But sure. all of those sound delicious. Um, like I was saying last week, I, I really appreciate how much the parks are really embracing bringing in more vegetarian options mm-hmm. and things for people with more limited diets. So seeing those potato tacos on there, I love a good potato taco. Those, so that's those are great. actually, those have been... Those are included on the permanent menu now. Previously, nice. they had a cauliflower taco, which I'm actually really sad to see go. Cause that it was, was good. Delicious. I remember having that, yeah. Very delicious. Mm. And it's been replaced with the potato taco. Personally, I would have loved to see both on the menu. Mm-hmm. But 
for right now, it's just the potato taco. For those of you wondering what the cortadillo is, it's the dessert. It's a Mexican pink cake. From the images that I've seen, it looks really, I don't know, it just looks really fun and cheerful because it's got a bright pink frosting Mm -hmm. with little brightly colored sprinkles on top, which actually goes well with Fantasmic because it's bright and colorful, kind of like the fireworks or something like that. So yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. I'm really, I'm really happy they added a third location because with Hungry Bear not being available for Fantasmic dining packages at this point, just having the two maybe wasn't going to meet the demand because these dining packages are people, people like us get really (laughs) excited about doing them. You know, it's kind of a supply and demand issue. So I'm, I'm so happy that there's a third option so even more people can experience it. Yes. A recently posted Disney audition notice has captured some attention. The notice is, quote, seeking seasonal candidates for the character lookalike roles of Isabella and Luisa, end quote. It goes on to explain that they will be appearing for things like signing autographs and posing for pictures. Okay, this... I don't know why, but is crazy exciting. So, of course, Mirabelle has been in the parks for Mm -hmm. quite a while. Bruno has made a couple of appearances specifically at the Oogie Boogie Bash parties. But now, Isabella and Luisa Madrigal are also going to be joining in on the fun. I am a little sad that it's just seasonal. Doesn't give any sort of a time frame as to what seasonal is so perhaps this is for the fall sure over the holidays i i'm going to assume they'll be in the parks over the fall but the other thing that's crazy exciting is we get all of these fun new characters but they're not always meet and greets but with how this is worded it's yes for sure a meet and greet these are not just characters that will be on parade floats that you can just like smile and wave at and perhaps snap a quick picture of like i'm thinking about for turning red, Panda May is in Disneyland right now, but she's only part of the parade. You can't actually go take your photo with the Panda version of May. So sure, this is exciting to me. Yes. Well, back in April, we reported that entertainment cast members were looking to unionize. The official vote took place, and it was a strong yes from the cast members to go ahead and unionize. The group Magic United plans to represent cast members, including theatrical performers, parade performers, character performers, and hosts, leads, and trainers that support that entertainment department. I, for one, am really excited about this, and I'm really excited for these cast members because, as we reported on previously... I was actually kind of surprised that with how many different unions are a part of the Disneyland Resort already, that this group wasn't unionized. Because, I mean, these these cast members are really, I mean, they're making magic. They are embodying these characters. They have to go through training to make, sh- sorry, magic spoiler, magic spoiler, magic spoiler. They have to go through specific training so that each character is seamless and so that it's not obvious to children that oh wait you're not the the mickey i saw yesterday because they're they take you know they take classes to make sure that their signatures are all done the proper way all sorts of stuff so i I just think of the costumes that they have to wear sometimes are probably not the most comfortable oh definitely so i just i'm really excited for them but yeah some of the reasons that they were seeking to unionize was they were some of the things did stem from concerns during the pandemic basically those things were like sharing costumes and being in close contact with guests but cast members have also been seeking better health and safety standards flexible paid time off fair schedules job security greater involvement in workplace discussions as well as higher wages also cast members have described getting into some of the costumes as quote putting their arms into fiberglass whereas others deal with dangerous conditions from overexertion because of working in the heat so by being represented by the union they can start to work towards those goals and kind of help better the work conditions that they're in. So in response, though, Disneyland confirmed that non-union employees do receive raises and yearly raises and paid sick leave in ways that align with industry standards. But they also said that they, quote, support our cast members' right to confidential vote that recognizes their individual choices. So Disney is also okay with this. So I just think this is this is awesome. And I'm really excited for these cast members because they work so so hard i mean all Mm -hmm. cast members work very very hard but the entertainment cast members 
all, you know, they, they work hard. They deserve this. Yes. And very cool of Disney to put out the statement saying that they support them and they back them. And Yeah, they kind of said like... That they support them without really saying that they support them because, you know, they're going to now, right. they're going to, the, the cast members now have a seat at the table to kind of have these discussions yes. so that they can make sure that they agree with changes and things that Disney's doing. So obviously that's, Disney isn't going to be able to just do what they want to do as far as how things were going. They're going to have to, you know, they're both going to have a little give and take now. Yes. And that's good for everybody, mm-hmm. I think. Well, testing has begun on some changes for guests going through security. Over at the parking structures, plexiglass has been installed at the bag check tables. Bags are handed to the cast members to examine behind the plexiglass while the guests go through the metal detector. So this is actually really, really interesting to me because we have obviously not gone through this ourselves, so we do not have firsthand experience. Not yet. Soon. But, well, no, this is currently, it's over at the parking structure, so it's oh, not, sure. not at the, the walk-in entrance that we oh, typically yeah. use. Yeah. But everything that I've been hearing online about this was negative and how it was, oh, it's slowing the lines down and, oh, it's, mm-hmm. you know, taking a lot more time. However, I think the intent is actually to speed things up. So I wonder if right now maybe it's just a little bit of growing pains with the new process. And I'm hoping that eventually once all the, once everything gets ironed out, this actually makes a smoother, more streamlined process for security than what we currently have now. Obviously, if they were to leave it up to DL Weekly, we would have asked for those body scanner type things that they have at Walt Disney World that you can wear your backpack right. and simply walk through. Yes, those and if are there's nice. something in the bag that you know alerts them and requires further screening, then they just ask you to step off to the side and then mm-hmm. then do it. Versus everybody going through and these poor cast members having to manually shuffle through your your belongings just to manually and physically check everything and i i mean the way that i'm I'm looking at the pictures of how they've got it set up and and i'm i keep rereading the paragraph over and over again and i don't see how the problem is the security itself i think it's people error i yeah i'm not sure what's causing the slowdown because when i walk up to security i know i'm about to go through security i know that they're going to go through the pockets of my backpack and so i open my backpack up i open up my snack bags i you know i get everything all set to try to expedite the process as much as possible so if i were walking up to this i would just hand my open backpack around the plexiglass shuffle myself through the metal detector and we're through so i I, I'm, I, I don't know, without actually being there and without seeing it with my own eyes, I'm passing judgment unfairly, yes, but I, I can't help but wonder, is this just the public is walking up on it and, you know, like getting said, confused? But it might also be a little, you know, because it's, it's a new process for both sure. sides, yeah. for mm-hmm. the guests as well as the, these security cast members. One thing I do see that might be a little clunky and could cause some problems is when you're at the airport when you've got loose things in your pocket they have these things i lovingly refer to them as dog dishes because that's what they remind they look me like of. dog bowls but they're yeah. kind of like these plastic bowls or dishes that are for you to put all your loose pocket stuff in so that when you go through the metal detectors or the scanners there you're you know it's 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 off your person so it's not triggering metal detectors to go off so they have something they have that now incorporated in this new updated security line that they're testing and the bowl they they have the bowl they did not have the bowls at disneyland before so they have the what i'm lovingly referring to as the dog dishes the dog water dishes there and you're supposed to put your items in the dish and then there's this little cutout at the base of the plexiglass think Mm -hmm. like like old school bank teller window where you kind of like are able to just like slide not really much more than your hands or arms under this thing. Yeah. It, to me, from this photo that Mice Chat shared, that that opening in the plexiglass does not look to be that oh. much larger than the dish that you're trying to pass through. So I could see that yeah. being an issue and how that could you know cause some backup. So perhaps maybe that's something that they can that they'll learn and they can kind of improve you know whether it's making that hole a little bit a little bit bigger so it's easier to get the dish the dish thing passed through but yeah i'm with you i feel like this sounds like it should actually be helping to speed up the process but 
I'm curious. Maybe, maybe if we've got time when we're there in June and they're still only testing this at the parking structures, maybe we'll take a trip on the tram for no no reason at all, but to take a trip <laughs> on the tram. But then also when we get off the tram, you actually leave security. And so we to get back on the tram, you'd have to go through security and go through these these updated security lines to so mm-hmm. i'm kind of i'm just kind of curious how this works because yeah on paper it sounds like it would work but it sounds like currently people are saying it's it's actually slowing things down so yeah time will tell we will find out <laughs> well june is just around the corner but there is still time to celebrate asian american and pacific islander heritage month around the resort tons of activities are available but they include an awesome i mean really awesome lineup of entertainment at the downtown disney live stage there are various artist signings there's turning red chalk art and of course food food lots and lots of food there was a foodie guide that we covered a few weeks back now we do have the links in our show notes if you need to remind yourselves of all the delicious amazing offerings they have in this foodie guide but what do you think okay let's talk about the lineup of entertainment at that stage because i just I don't know why, but it just, if I was local, I would be eating this up. I'd be there every weekend so I could see, see and experience all these things. Cause that's the thing. All the things, all the entertainment at the downtown Disney stage, that's free. You don't need a park yeah. ticket to go to downtown Disney and experience these. Oh yeah. Then the Polynesian dance experience mm-hmm. and being able to learn how to dance. And I mean, I, I don't think I could hula, but hey, it would be gonna, nice to have the opportunity. Try, yep, they will try and teach yeah, you and you will you know, learn about it. The I hips just... don't lie and these hips are telling you that I can't hula. But <laughs> I don't know. I, what a unique and cool experience, though, to be able to go see and do at a Disney property. Like, come on. Yeah, so there's the Polynesian dance experience. There's also quite the lineup of different, like, singing and musical groups the artist showcase and signings some of them were in disneyland some of them were in downtown disney but they happened at off the page disneyana the disney home store which is in downtown disney and then off the page again but there were three disney artists that were available to do meet and greets and sign some of their work for you i just think it's so fun it's not like it's not it's not something that's celebrated to the extent of like pixar fest where they like paint the I just think it's so fun that they do still celebrate all of these other things around the resort even while they've got things like their their IPs that they're celebrating to Star Wars, Pixar, all that stuff. I just I find this so so fun and it seems to me that each year these celebrations grow and grow and there's yes. just more and more cool stuff that they offer. So I I love it. If I was local, I would be there. I would be there for sure. Speaking of Pixar Fest, it is in full swing, and a new announcement shared some exciting things that are coming to the Pixar Place Hotel. For a limited time, the hotel will be hosting a complimentary speaker series. The current lineup is incredible, and it includes Saturday, May 25th, Peter Son, the director of Elemental, Thursday, June 20th, Marissa Horwitz, the lead editor for Inside Out 2. Saturday, July 13th, Roger Gold, the creative director, Theme Parks and Pixar Animation Studios. This is open to all Disneyland hotel guests. Just speak with the front desk to secure your space. Spots are limited and subject to availability. Okay, so there's a lot to kind of unpack here. This is cool. Is (laughs) wildly cool wildly cool typically you don't get to see presentations from names like this unless you go to events like d23 or disneyana or oh, yeah. the mouse meet this these are not things that normally just happen at disney hotels and just happen for the guests of the hotel so i that's just right. so so cool so Obviously, this makes perfect sense that it's happening during Pixar Fest and it's happening at the Pixar Place Hotel. I mean, can you get even more Pixar than having those two stars align? But I mean, these are some cool, crazy, crazy cool people to be able to hear from and, you know, chat with. And I'm sure there'll be Q&As and stuff. So if you are an animation movie buff, this, you know, maybe... Staying at a Disney property was not something that you were going to do, but this might be worth it because, come on, how cool. So again, this is open to all 
Disney hotel guests, not just guests that are staying at the Pixar Place Hotel. This is included for guests that are staying at the Disneyland Hotel as well as the Grand Californian too. So this is open to just those hotel guests and it is, uh, there's nothing saying that it's, I mean, it's complimentary, it's included. So I just, incredible. I got all excited because I didn't read the fine print, but I'm like, oh, we're going to be there for one of those. We're going to be there Thursday, June 20th for Marisa, who is the lead editor, like Vern mentioned, for Inside Out 2. And I was like, we've got to do this. And then I was like, wait, we are not. We're staying at the Howard Johnson. So this is not open to us. But yeah. man, if any weekly tiers are able to go experience these, you need to write in and tell us how awesome they are. Because this is, this is phenomenal. I hope they do more events like this in the future, too. Because I just... How fun. How fun. Yeah. I mean, making it available to more or less the general public. I mean, sure, you got to stay at the hotel, but I mean, to not have to have special tickets for an event mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, those events sell out so fast and they're so hard to get into. This is really cool. That they make it more available to people. Yes. Yes. Well, it's that time again and we are hosting our public live stream this Sunday. That's right. This Sunday, May 26th. Join us on our YouTube channel at 5.30 p.m. Disneyland time. Some exciting news. We did push this back one week because Tag will be back. And so he will be back. I think he'll probably give us a sneak peek at some of his thoughts from his Disney cruise that they just got off of. It was a 13-night transatlantic Disney cruise, his first ever Disney cruise. He and I were chatting a little bit via text message, iMessage, and man, it sounds like it was an incredible incredible experience so i for one am excited to hear more but if you would like to hear a sneak peek before we talk about it on the episode again be sure to join us this sunday the 26th of may at 5 30 p.m disneyland time on our youtube channel i am groot what do you mean you're hungry craglin needs those pots for the rehydrator we don't have time for snacks i am groot now, were you talking to tag and teresa again how'd they even get a hold of you I am Groot. Fine. One snack. That's it. I am Groot. No, I haven't seen any churros. you got to talk to Vern. And stop smiling. So this week in Snack Chat, we are rounding the corner and starting our way into New Orleans Square. I always have to laugh about this location because for some reason, whenever Tag and I try to remember the name of this spot... It like escapes us. So and of course, it's a great location. Why it cannot stick in our brain all the time, I'm not sure. But we're of course talking about the Royal Street Veranda. So as you round the corner into New Orleans Square, just past where the Pirates of the Caribbean queue is and the beautiful steps that lead up to the 21 Royal dining experience is the Royal Street Veranda. On the other side of the Royal Street Veranda is the Port Royal Curios and Curiosity Shop, which is the current shop that has all of the Haunted Mansion items, as well as lots of Nightmare Before Christmas items. It's connected to Pieces of Eight, which is the pirates theme shop, of course. Yes. But this is such a cute little dining location. I kind of wonder how many people maybe don't even realize that it's there, because it is kind of tough. It is tucked oh, back. Yeah. Yeah. It is tucked back. It it. If you didn't know, you might just think it was kind of a little dining spot because there's just all the like a little like seats and tables spot kind of a thing. Sure. And might not even notice that walk up window back there. But mm -hmm. let's talk about Royal Street Veranda. Yes. So seasonally, they are offering the Pixar Fest travel tumbler. There's a limit of only 10 per person per <laughs> transaction. You imagine. Which I was curious, so I had to check, and I looked on eBay, and they are going for like double what they sell oh, in the jeepers, park. So yeah. I totally understand why there is the limit 10 per person. And uh, they're cute. I mean, it, it's that the new style animation drawing of the characters, mm -hmm. and you know they're, they're very cute. You gotta If you get a chance, you got to pick one up. Don't pick up more than 10. So they do have those offered seasonally right now. If you're there for breakfast, you have your choice of the Waffle Cristo or the Waffle Cristo. <laughs> you can get of course the... <laughs> he means you can choose between the full order and the half order. Yes. So Tay and I did give this a try a couple trips ago because it was actually like brand spanking new when we just happened to have a trip planned. So we, we did give it a try. I enjoy the Monte Cristos. I thought I was going to enjoy the Waffle Cristos 
evenly or you know pretty close evenly sure it it wasn't my thing as much i don't and i i couldn't tell you why i preferred the monte cristo yeah. the traditional monte cristo over the waffle crystals yeah. i do think it is a fun twist is this the same restaurant where Tag and I used to always get our Monte Cristos? No, 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 no. Okay. Remember, this is just that little walk-up window. Okay, sure. Yep. Yeah, okay. this is different. It's next door to where next door. Okay. you get Monte mm-hmm. Cristos. Making yes. sure I've got the right or places in my head. The, across yep. the way. It's yep. close by, but this is not Because I can the same picture place. this place in my head. I'm just not sure what I've eaten there. So, yep. All right. Well, really, for the longest time, it was just soup and bread bowls that you yep. could get there. Yep. And so I I've, do very, or I have very much enjoyed the bread bowls mm-hmm. that I've got clam in there. Chowder. Yep. Because I would always get my clam chowder one there mm-hmm. they also had and they had a gumbo one that i really uh, liked this was this was they? years back yeah hmm. yeah years back i haven't had it in a long time but there was a gumbo one that i really liked i don't remember that unfortunately I'm... i don't think they have that currently no not currently but they do have the clam chowder bread bowl let's let's go into dinner <laughs> Yeah, so th- this this location is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. is what it is open for every every day. So yeah, soup and a sourdough bread bowl. This is kind of what this place is known for. Currently, you can get the soup in sourdough bread bowl, according to their menu right now, is just the clam chowder. There is also a plant-based option, which is a butternut squash soup, which sounds delightful i mm-hmm. want this i hope this sticks around for the fall time because this sounds like a perfect fall soup oh yeah it's a rich butternut squash soup topped with pepita brittle and of course served in a sourdough bread bowl yum and for anybody that's wondering because i had to have my brain refreshed on this pepita brittle that is pumpkin seed brittle mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and if you it's haven't delicious. had their sourdough bread bowls they are so Good. You know, we had someone on. We had a weekly tier on. It was quite a while back. You can actually just order a bread bowl there if you wanted. Oh, very nice. Come on, what a delicious, what a delicious Mm -hmm. thing to snack. Yeah, I mean they've they've got that crustiness Mm -hmm. on the outside, light and flaky, and then on the inside they're so soft and yeah, very nice. And then of course you can also have the Cajun chicken salad sandwich. That's Sounds delicious. Mm-hmm. Yes. Cajun chicken salad tossed in Cajun ramelade, tomatoes, lettuce, and fried onions. Yum, yum, yum. So the other nice thing about this location is it is a quick service restaurant. So you can, there is mobile order or you can walk up to the window and it's kind of a grab and go place. They do have seating right there, right outside of where the, the windows are. But the other thing that's really awesome too is this is a pretty inexpensive priced spot to get food so oh yeah for example the soup and a sourdough bread bowl is 12.49 while the cajun chicken salad sandwich is 12.99 really the expensive thing on the menu is the uh, pixar fest tumbler (laughs) the other thing that they have been doing more recently is they've been offering seasonal fritters right now the current fritter is a pineapple coconut fritter which is served with a pineapple it is a pineapple coconut fritter but also served with a pineapple marmalade D.O. Weekly announces the boarding of the Trivia Express, nonstop star speeder service to the moon of Endor. All passengers, please prepare for immediate boarding. Welcome to Trivia Land, where we've got some awesome listener-submitted questions, and we are ready to see how Teresa does against the listeners this week. Teresa, you are already shaking your head. I'm just really (laughs) happy that next week I no longer have to brave Trivia Land alone. And there'll be somebody else braving it with me and and going through all these questions. These questions (laughs) have been awesome, but they have been tough. The listeners are... They're brutal. They like to challenge Uh, us. Yes, they they come up with some great stuff. And I mean, sometimes just double-checking their answers. I'm like, wow, where did you find this? It's impressive. (laughs) And then eventually I find it, and I'm like, wow, okay, well done. Well (laughs) done. All right. Well, your first listener submitted question tonight. From listener, hashtag Save Teresa's Trees. (laughs) Picture this. You are on the Disneyland Railroad, and you are riding the segment just in between the New Orleans Frontierland Station and the Toontown Station. You pass behind Big Thunder Ranch. On your right, there is a very small building and a bunch of supplies. In front of the building is a little doghouse. What name is painted on the doghouse? Dang it, I think we've had this before, too. Or if we haven't had it before, I, like, 
noticed it. I know I if we have if, if we didn't actually have it before I'm maybe, fairly certain you've pointed it out to me I was gonna say it, if we hadn't had it before I know that I've like noticed it while uh, like I know I know about this okay. you know you know yes I know I know and it's either because of having the question before or actually like noticing this detail mm-hmm. and getting all excited about it and probably going I should remember this for trivia because this would be a great trivia question well guess what <laughs> <laughs> I definitely mm, dang it I remember it was something clever I don't know dang my gut says something like spotter Fido, like it was like clever in the fact that it wasn't clever. But I'm also wondering maybe it's like nugget, like like gold nugget. You know, it's kind of like theme themed. Does that make sense? Mm. I I have no hope. I'm gonna go with the themed guess, which is nugget. Is that your final answer? Yeah. And if okay. it's not nugget, I'm gonna maybe start a petition because that would be a really cute dog name to live sure. in frontier land with the gold rush. <laughs> <laughs> no, not bad. All right. Your second listener submitted question from listener Chrissy A. How many parking spaces are in the Pixar Pals parking structure? Oh, no, this was a total tag question. He would probably be able to figure this out. <laughs> now, there is an answer that is from DisneyParks.go. There is also an answer that I found from the Orange County Register. And they're and the, not the same? The two answers are pretty far off of each other so i will Dang. accept anything reasonably inside the range i'm gonna say uh i don't even remember how many levels it is that's how i confession maybe i've confessed this before i've never been in the pixar pals parking structure oh yeah so that makes it even harder i feel like we have a not a road trip, a, a foot trip. A tram trip. A tram trip. We're already taking the tram to go check out the security stuff. You know, so we may so as well check out. We're just going to add it to our day. parking structure. Yep. Ooh, I'm going to say 4,500. Final answer. I, yeah, it's as good as it's going to get. <laughs> okay. Your third regular round question from listener Sarah P. Westcott would have been the first of its kind to have a hotel within the theme park. Mm -hmm. When the idea was scrapped and DCA was created, which hotel opened to coincide with this new park? The Grand Californian. Is that your final answer? Yes. You seem awfully sure about it. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sticking with it. All righty. Your fourth and final regular round question from listener Eric D. In the Haunted Mansion attraction in Disneyland, there is a ghost that is seen blowing out candles on a cake. She's so cute. That ghost face can also be seen four times on the Pirates of the Caribbean. Can you describe the four appearances of that ghost face in Pirates? Okay, this is going to sound a little crazy, but it's a female that's Mm -hmm. blowing out the candles in the haunted mansion she's nicknamed birthday girl and i think that's probably the same face as oh gosh what's his name the one that's spitting water out carlos the mayor yes as he's being dunked in the well and he spits out the well yes Uh, uh, yes carlos Mm -hmm. i'm gonna say carlos okay four times in the in Mm -hmm. dang uh, oh, oh! The whistling pirate in the the end scene with the dog with the keys. The prisoner. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. The whistling prisoner, though. Sure. Um, let me think. Dang, this is a great question. <clears throat> okay, can I get a hint? Is it always this the exact same facial expression? The pursed lips and the set of the eyes are exactly the same. The facial hair and the Boy, hair yeah. color but changes. It's always the, like physical, like no change whatsoever to the pursed lips and the set of the eyes. Okay. Oh, there's. Uh, I don't even know how to describe this. There's in the scene with Red, the left side. One of the townspeople. He's like he's carrying one of his items to like give to the pirate that they're going to auction off. It's one of the rich people, like one of the t- the rich townspeople that the pirates are plundering. 
he's got like a he's got an expression. I don't even know how to describe this guy. But I think it's there. <laughs> that doesn't really help, but that's my answer and I'm sticking to it. Are there two prisoners that are whistling? There's like the iconic scene, but there's also the other prisoners that are, there's like the first cell of prisoners and then there's the iconic scene. The first cell of prisoners that you pass and then the iconic scene. Not that I recall. Oh, oh, is it one of the pirates chasing the ladies on the turntables that are behind where Captain Jack's trying to steal the mass, the, the, the key? Are you asking me, or are you no, giving I, that I, as an that's answer? My, that's my final answer. We're going to okay. forget the pirate, the the first cell pirates. We're going to forget about them. We're, okay. we're going to say it's one of the, it's a pirate chasing a, a lady with a pie or a baked good of some sort. No, no, no. The ladies are chasing the pirates. That's what it is. One pirate is still chasing a lady, but I'm going to say it's the that scene. Okay. Final answer. Final answer. All right. Not I. I'm okay. I'm pretty. I'm semi confident. I'm a little bit more confident on that now. I forgot about all those pirates over there. Okay. And your bonus question tonight from listener Paulo D. In Disneyland's fiftieth anniversary parade, Walt Disney's Parade of Dreams, the Fairy Godmother, the Blue Fairy, and the fairies from Sleeping Beauty lead the opening unit. However, in the rare occasion that either the Fairy Godmother or Blue Fairy were out, which character would take their place? It, the only other fairy I can think of is Tinkerbell. So Tinkerbell. Does it necessarily have to be a fairy? I don't know because I did not see this parade in person. So I don't know this answer. Okay. Mickey? Could it be somebody else magical? I don't know. You're trying to give me a hint, and I'm still not even picking up on it. Okay. That looks to me like Yen Sid. I, the, the listeners can't see that I'm stroking yeah, my stroking beard. Yeah, he's stroking his beard, which I would think is like Yen Sid, the wizard. Or you've got Merlin. But I don't think Merlin was in a parade up until magic happens. I don't think Yen Sid has been in a parade at all. Yen Sid's the sorcerer from uh, Fantasia. Mickey does not have a beard, so your beard hint is not is not is not Mickey, and it's obviously Mickey not Tinkerbell. Mickey never has a beard. Not that I'm aware of. No. Didn't Mickey put okay. on a fake beard? The only the... thing I can think is my man Merlin, but I don't think that's right. Final answer. Yes. Final All answer. right. Well, listeners, how do you think Teresa did? How did you do listening at home? Stick around until after the discussion topic and we can all find out together. Well, for this week, we have a very special returning guest. We have our friend Debbie from Designer Park Co. coming back and we're doing kind of a check-in with you, Debbie. So how's it been going? How are you? Yeah, I'm wonderful. How are you doing, Teresa? Great. So back on episode 222 is when we first spoke with you and your husband, Steve, about this wild and crazy new adventure that you were going on, which is Designer Park Co. So yeah, we're really we're really excited for you guys both because it's been a wild ride watching yeah. the company boom and grow. But yeah, we just kind of wanted to check back in with you. So before we dive in, for those of you that didn't go back and listen to 222, I mean, go ahead, do that. But Debbie, can you tell us what your Disney story is? Sure. Steve and I both grew up in Northern California. So and that's where we met and got married. And then we ended up moving to Utah about a year and a half after we got married. So that's where we are now. But we spent most of our teenage adult years growing up going to Disneyland. And we both were borderline obsessed with it. So <laughs> that worked out well. You you always want to find someone who kind of gets your passion a little bit. Yeah. And so we started going when we were first dating. And then after we got married, we ended up getting an annual pass. It was during the 50th. And that was a big deal. I mean, that firework show, everyone that saw it should have just <laughs> bought an annual pass and just kept going and going. I think that's what happened because the park got extremely busy from then on. <laughs> so we have been going as a married couple. We've been married. We'll be married 20 years this next June. Wow. And so lots and lots of years going to Disney. We have two kids. We have a nine-year-old, almost 10, and we have a 12-year-old, almost 13. 
And so we've been taking them since they were infants. And Steve and I had both always kind of prided ourselves on having a lot of tips and tricks for people. And when people would say they were going on a trip, they would always call us or text us. We'd get messages from friends and family forever saying, what should I do? Because they knew that we knew the parks well and we could give them some advice. And our number one advice tip was to use a hydration backpack, like a camelback kind of bag, which is funny because I am not a hiker and neither is Steve. So that was the only place we really took them was just to the parks after, I don't know, back in like 2005, 2006, this was before everyone having a water bottle was such a thing. Mm -hmm. We would just drink from like those plastic reusable bottles and we would use like one pack of crystal light and split it between the two bottles because the water tasted so gross from the parks <laughs> at the time. I feel like it's gotten better, but anyway. I think so too. Yeah. So we would do that and it was really important. I get dehydrated really easy and it gives me really bad headaches. And so for me, that was like my major number one thing I needed to stay on top of was hydration. So flash forward to many, many years later, we decided to start a business based on that. But our Disney story is just going to the parks forever and ever and ever. We actually have a stone outside of the parks, one of those bricks with our name. Yeah. When we first got married, we got one of those and Steve's family had one also already. And so that's what gave him the idea to, to do that. But Very cool. Yeah. So we're always going to Disneyland. <laughs> so are, are you guys nerds like us? We have to go. It, I don't have a brick because I was not cool when that was a thing. I Maybe they'll know open it, was it up again Maybe. and then you can get one. <laughs> but we go visit. Tag has one. So we always have to go visit Tag's brick. I even go visit yeah. Tag's brick when he's not with me at the park. I don't That's know so why, funny. but like, it's just a thing. Do you guys always have to go visit your bricks though? Not always. We do every so often. I think, especially when the kids were little, we would take them more often. We've got sure. pictures of them as they've grown up, like oh, over cute. time sitting in front of the brick, which is kind of fun. Yeah. And then we also have a little wooden one or an acrylic. I think we have one, one, one that's wooden and one that's acrylic. I oh, can't mm -hmm. remember which one's for which brick, but we have like a little replica of each of them Very at cool. our house. So Yeah. We do go visit them sometimes. It's funny when you're, whenever you're looking for it, it seems like everyone wants to walk in that section right then. <laughs> and you're like, hey, yo, move. I'm trying to count these numbers. And I didn't even know the pattern until like my last trip that how to find the numbers. I was just uh, looking randomly. Mm -hmm. It was like, I know it's in this section. Let's all figure out who can find it first. There, it's just, it's like a fun game. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like finding Mickey Mouse. There we tell go. our kids find them in the park. <laughs> so yeah, that's us. It's funny. I just got back from Disney world mm -hmm. and that's the place that we had gone to right before we decided to start this business. That's oh. where I kind of got the inspiration of finally taking the steps to do it. Cause we thought about doing it for a lot of years. Mostly I just wanted this, something that was cute, but also would offer me hydration. And I just couldn't seem to find anything like that. So after our trip to Disney world and so many people would come up to us and they do that at Disneyland too, but it seems like at Disney World, we got way more people saying, oh my gosh, you have a hydration bag. That's so crazy. That's a great idea. Stuff like that. Yeah. And then somebody freaked out at Disneyland on a trip we took right before our trip to Disney World about my Minnie Mouse ears being on my backpack. And I wasn't huge into Minnie Mouse ears. Now it's like a problem, <laughs> like lock me up in, in a mental institution. I, I have so many ears. Yep. <laughs> so, and so, but at the time I only had like one or two pairs, but anyway, I put them on my bag because they would hurt my head. Like everybody has that happen. So I thought, okay, we got to make a bag that would be hydration that would hold my Minnie Mouse ears. And I just started looking at my Camelback and thinking about the capabilities of that and how I could translate it into something else. And then I came to Steve and I'm like, I'm going to start this business and I'm going to start with a pre order. So we don't have to like go out and buy it all out of our pocket right away for the first order. And I was going to do a Kickstarter and then I decided not to, to just do it on our own. Mm -hmm. And just, I don't know, you learn things by watching YouTube videos and reading blog posts and you know, I just taught myself by YouTube, basically, how to start a business. <laughs> it's the whole, like, your whole ride of having the idea and just doing it is just so amazing and so incredible to me because you just, like, 
so many people have ideas, right? But it's yeah. it's the whole how do you get from having the idea to then making it a reality and you just kind of I don't want to say winged it, but you just figured it out yeah. as you went and you just didn't give up. I just that's so incredible. So oh, incredible. we did. We winged it. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's funny because you learn as you go and you don't know what you don't know. And so as you get into it, you learn more and more. <laughs> and so I I always had this weird personality where I don't really accept no for an answer. Sure, and yeah. so a lot of people and, and I actually don't care if I fail at something because I know that that just means that I need to fix something, learn something from it and try again. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, I think it's funny because in studying and being a Disney fan, a Disney fanatic, if you study Walt Disney, there almost wasn't a business person that failed more than Walt Disney at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he had some real big failures and he didn't sit back and rest on his laurels and say, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. He just said, what can I do to learn from this? Learn from my bad contracts, learn from my bad employers, you know, figure out how to be in charge of everything in the right way. And so I don't know, you just learn, but yeah. yeah. So we just, I figured out after I, before I had this business, I used to import baby moccasins from China and sell them to all my neighbors because I wanted to buy them for my daughter. <laughs> and yeah. I didn't, I didn't want 500 pairs for right, myself. Right, right. So I had to buy such a huge quantity that I was like, Hey, I'll just pre-sell these. And then I'll give people their orders and I was shipping them to people and stuff. And this was like a little side business on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And then I would sell them on eBay, the ones that I had extra. And we did that for a while. And then my daughter kind of grew out of them. And I was like, well, this is annoying. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> You're like, like, well, I, don't need, I don't need these anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like selling Mary Kay for a while. And then you kind of go, well, I'm good. I got all the makeup I could ever need. And <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Yeah. yeah. So I already kind of knew how to figure out like a manufacturer in China. Sure. Yeah. But this was different because I had, because I decided to create the whole thing from scratch. Mm -hmm. So instead of just buying a product they already made and picking the colors I wanted it in, I had to figure out all the other little details. And so started off by finding the hydration kit that I found on Amazon and I bought a sample of it. And then I was like, this actually works with just a water bottle. This is amazing. Cause I hated the camelback bladder, yeah. that thing that you would slide into the bag. And that was, I thought, oh my gosh, I can make this for the everyday person. Cause most people going to the parks do not want a big sack of water like if they're just wanting a cute bag that's not right gonna fly yeah, yeah. well and so, like you said uh, and it's the refill it's really not yeah, fun to it's try and really refill not those. fun <laughs> yeah and they stink and they leak and just you know yeah. there's just so many issues and honestly if you're a really avid hiker they work great in those bags mm -hmm. they fit right in there the problem I was having was my camelback had no storage to it. It was like flat and it was long and kind of skinny and it would flop over. So it would never sit upright. And so I kind of, when you get on the ride and I started putting pins and stuff on them, it would fall all over the place. And it was just kind of a nuts, but also it was a two liter bag of water. And yeah. I mean, imagine strapping a two liter bottle to your back every time you refilled <laughs> it. So I would dread filling it all the way it would be so heavy for the longest time. And then I drink it down. And then I was like, my bag, I can do this. Like, and then oh, I'm like, crap, fine. I'm out of water. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta refill it. And I felt like an idiot going to the Plaza Inn with a sack of water with this <laughs> tube hanging off of it. It looked like I was bringing like a saline thing in. I just was like, don't look at me. Don't look in my eyes. I'm that person. <laughs> I want ice in my bag. So, yep. so whatever. Yeah. And so my husband would he was like, I don't care. And I, I cared. So <laughs> yeah, I just started drawing up ideas. I, I had a general idea of the size I wanted it to be. And then I, I kind of sent them pictures of backpacks that were the similar shape and size. And then I started adding and removing pockets and sure, yeah. creating the net por portion on the very back of the bag. So if you don't know, our bag also has like a hidden storage net in a zipper in the back of it. You, you can pull out and clip to the front of your bag and it hangs underneath it to hold like your sweatshirt mm -hmm. or wet umbrella. Or um, I use it on, I used it on a cruise and I put my like wet sandy towel oh, in that compartment. Go. Yep. So there's, there's always a weird use for the net, but people are like, what? <laughs> a net? And yeah. then they use it and they're like, wait, this was actually low key awesome mm -hmm. that I could 
carry some extra stuff when I needed to. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And so I having that part was the hardest to figure out because every sample, it seemed like was a problem. The first one had, they just put the net in the bottom of the bag and there was just a, so you'd unzip the pocket to get it out and there'd just be a big open hole. And I'm like, everything's going to fall out of your bag. Oh. It's just, there was no, yeah, so there wasn't right like now, a liner or something. Yeah. There was no liner. And I was like, dude, you guys. So it took four or five samples and going back and forth with China for a few months to really get it figured out before we had the first version of the bag ready to go. Yeah. And so it's just been growing it and getting new colors and Mm -hmm. new different styles and stuff. So it's been super fun to see people in the parks, to walk up and see somebody wearing our bag as we're just walking down main street. It's like the weirdest feeling ever, but it's so awesome. (laughs) I will see. And like, I'm a nerd. I actually will like I get excited because I'm like I know them and then yeah. sometimes we'll st- I'll strike up conversations with people and they'll be like which one do you have so it's it's yeah. it's so fun so the it's first, like a little club yeah, there you go right <laughs> it's like this kind of like if you know you know club you know you know yeah, yeah which is great so the first bag was the rope drop yeah so when this is I, I'm sorry but this is just so fascinating to me so when you had the idea to when you kind of got the final yes we got the correct one let's go what was that time frame roughly for you i don't expect you to know yeah no i do so (laughs) like oh it was a seven hour no (laughs) well no my parents so my parents were in town for thanksgiving and my dad's a big entrepreneur and i wanted to talk to somebody i was nervous to talk to my husband about it because i knew he was gonna be (laughs) really annoyed with one of my Ski, not ski. Yeah, no, but yeah, one of your. Yep, I get it. At first, honestly, he was very against the idea. So everything I would come to him with, he would have a reason why we should not do that. He was just challenging you, is all. He was yeah. just making sure. <laughs> he he grew up with his father being an entrepreneur, and his father is very successful. Oh, mm-hmm. So there's no like, oh, my dad's an entrepreneur, and we were always struggling situation. Sure, sure. A small child starting lemonade stands, like every single chance I could get, I was really good at sales. And so I I thought it was fun at first. We didn't want to say designer because we're not trying to say we are designer bags. Like they are nicer than some other bags, but they're not designer. Like we don't think for Louis right. Vuitton or something. Right. But there is a company named like Park Designs or something like that. And they are the people that created Harry Potter World and all sorts oh. of other actual theme parks. Yeah. <laughs> so we yeah, were yeah. like, oh, let's not try to just like add an S and do like almost the same name and be our SEO would be all crazy. So we changed the name and he liked it. So I, I just started sharing it on Instagram and on Facebook with some friends and family. Mm -hmm. And then they started telling their friends and family. And then I actually met with a neighbor of mine who is a Disney content creator influencer. And she was having a get together with all the different content creators here in Utah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And I met and it was, this was like right in January sometime. And I started talking to my parents about my idea in at like Thanksgiving time. So at that point I had contacted a few manufacturers. I was going back and forth with them on designs. And I went through a few manufacturers before I decided on our first one, just got vibes that they were not quite up to par with what I wanted. Yeah, But it takes a lot of patience in that whole process because it it just I don't know it feels like you're going nowhere like you're running in sure. circles especially yeah, sure. with the time difference between China and here mm-hmm. so I kind of got all screwed up in my brain I was up in the middle of the night a lot and so I would wake up at three in the morning and just be awake and I was like why because I had been doing it for so long by getting up because I needed to chat with them for about wow. something and anyway so I guess we started kind of I started working on the designs around Thanksgiving time and then by the end of January, I was ready to do a pre-order. I finally had one or two samples that I could show people and explain to them what, what it was about. Mm-hmm. And then I started with that, with the pre-order, yeah, the end of January. And then I came onto your show in yeah. February, like middle of February. It was the 22nd. <laughs> I, I only you know remember this. this. <laughs> that's my sister's birthday, which that's not oh, why. But today yep. I was standing in my kitchen and the universe is a really bizarre place yes. to be in sometimes because I looked down at, we have a little Google home screen thing yeah. that flashes pictures. Yeah, yeah. And I 
I kid you not, we have thousands of pictures on our Google photos. Mm -hmm. I mean, my husband's like, our kids are going to be so screwed. We had no pictures growing up. It was easy to find one or two pictures because you had a hundred to choose from. Right. Yeah. Our pictures. uh, Yeah. With digital photos, our kids are like inundated. Anyway, up comes a picture of me that I'd taken a selfie right before I filmed with you guys. I was so excited to be going on a podcast. That's crazy. To talk about it. And it's not like a lot of times it's one year ago and it's, or it's like, oh, there's me at Disneyland at Christmas time last year because it's around the same time of year. Or like we like to go around Thanksgiving time to Disneyland. There's always pictures coming up then, but it's weird that today that picture would come up randomly. Yeah. No kidding. No yeah. kidding. That's crazy. It's so bizarre. So I was like, oh, yeah, February 22nd. That was the day. <laughs> and I reached out to you and I'd sent you a message like, I'm starting this business. Yeah. We're making these park bags. And you were so nice and you wrote back to me. But it was like a month later because I remember you saying you were so busy and you were so sorry that it took you a while <laughs> to get back to me. And I was like, oh, please, I I'm a, you know, like a peon in the Disney community. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, going to that Disney meetup was really helpful because I got to talk to a lot of other content creators and see in person how they reacted to the the yeah. idea of my product because they were all very excited about it, which was really encouraging for me. Mm-hmm. And then you guys were so, so nice. And I have really have valued our friendship that we have started ever yes. since we recorded with you guys. So anyway, it's all been of crazy ride but it's been really fun it you know and we've just been like people i don't know onlookers watching this crazy ride of yours and it's just (laughs) it's just remarkable it's just so cool like i said i've got that like i feel like i'm connected to these random other people in the parks Mm -hmm. wearing the it's true (laughs) i'm just like i know you don't know me but i'm just really excited you have a designer park co bag yeah uh, it's well our first The first time I saw somebody with one of our bags, a friend of ours actually met us at the parks and she was there the day before and she had a couple people come up to her and say, oh, you have one of those bags. They're really nice, aren't they? And Mm -hmm. I was like, what? That happened? And she's like, yeah. And then we were in line for Indiana Jones. I think I told you the story. Emily, who does our, who does the, the amazing stop motion videos. Oh, she and her family had just they were at Disneyland for the first time and they listened to your podcast to figure out what they wanted to do at the parks and stuff oh. to get back, like to figure the those parks out. Cause Disney world, if you're familiar with that, it's helpful, but yeah. it's so, they're so different. Yes. Similar, but, so, but different. You kind of yeah. feel like you're like in an alternate universe. Yeah. And a you're a little like, bit lost. You're like, I, little... I know this, but I don't know this. <laughs> exactly. Cause, cause the bathrooms aren't in the same place. Even mm-hmm. the weather is very different. I just, mm-hmm. And and the way that they run the parks is different. Oh, yeah. You know, their yeah. policies and procedures, everything. So they were big fans of your podcast oh, and they had awesome. heard our episode <laughs> and they had bought the mother and daughter, both of them had our backpacks on and yeah. we were in line for Indy and we had come to this part of the line where you're kind of in this like stone hallway oh, that's mm-hmm. really skinny before you turn and you're going and you can see the ride loading across and then you're going to go up the stairs and go over and go down. Anyway, yep, yep, know you know what I'm talking about. about. Yep. <laughs> so we were kind of stuck there because the ride had just broken down mm. and that, cause that never happens, right? No, just kidding. <laughs> never, um, never for Indy. <laughs> Poor Indy. <laughs> yeah. So right then we had just stopped and I looked over and they were wearing our bags and I was like, I had an out of body experience. It was like, the universe was just, I don't know, something lined up and it was just so weird. It was like my dream had, I was seeing it in fruition yeah. right in front of me. And Incredible. I started talking to them and they were the sweetest family. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about pin collecting and about how they like the parks, what rides they should definitely do, what they have done, stuff like that. And she said, they were saying how much they loved our bags and how much they loved your podcast. And it was like <laughs> so weird. That's so sweet. So, yeah, Emily is the best. And we are working, we're going to be working with her to create some advertising with her ah, stop motion stuff. But that's she's exciting. Just so sweet. But it's it's been kind of one of those weird things that kind of works itself out in the in the strangest ways. So, but I mean, but that's you guys just, had a big part of it. Well, we were, you know, we were thrilled. And like you, we are just so like ecstatic that we first of all we love the products we love the bags but 
I think more importantly to us, like you said, is the friendship that we've gotten. And we always, it, it, when our trips line up, the last two, we just I know just, just missed, missed each, each other, other by like days. I know, but it's I just know. always so fun to see you guys when we can and to connect when we can. <laughs> it's just we're cheering you on even from afar if we don't touch yeah. base it's just we're always so excited for you so, I know you're always messaging me you're like I, know, I see this I something I'm like what is this it looks exciting what is happening I know so, so of yeah. course I own three I had to double check yes. I own three bags <laughs> now of course two versions of the rope drop bag the rope drop, and yeah. then so tell us what what has happened since the rope drop bag because that it's it's yeah. not the only one anymore it's got there's a whole family <laughs> there is they're growing so my plan was always to have four different bags and kind of okay kind of focus on four different kind of park goer because I feel like the rope drop bag is for me it's like I'm a mom but my kids are aren't in, like they they can handle themselves it's sure, mostly yeah. just for myself yeah but I'm pretty serious when I go to the parks it is not something that I take lightly because I have to travel from a couple states away mm -hmm. and so I want to maximize all my time there and it's not just like oh I take a tiny I'm just gonna say lululemon fanny pack and walk around with just like a few items I yeah. like to have some snacks I like to be prepared in a lot of different ways you're and like so I'm here from open space. clothes I need yeah. everything I could possibly need in that time on, totally. you don't know on my person <laughs> and and Disneyland as opposed to Disney World gets cold in the morning and then it gets mm -hmm. cold at night so, through a lot of the year I think there are some months in the summer where you can get away with probably just wearing a t-shirt all day but yeah, yeah. There are definitely times where it's a bit chilly in the morning and there's some fog that needs to burn off. And then in the evening, if you're going to stay for the fireworks and the parades, which is the best time to be at the parks, you're going to want some layers. Also, mm -hmm. inside some of those red show, the show buildings, it can be kind of chilly. That's true. It just depends on your desires. But anyway, so the rope drop was more for like your serious park goer person, but mostly someone who's just carrying stuff for their, their own person. And then the Master Gracie was our second bag we came up with because my husband, I felt bad that I was, I, I felt like he needed something he could wear that he would wear. Yeah. He is a man. He's not a manly man, but he doesn't want to wear a rope drop backpack. And my, and, but I've seen plenty of men, men mm -hmm. wear it. My yeah. son wore it for a long time. It's, it's totally doable. He just, I was like, we need something for you. So we created a little larger version. It's actually a skinnier bag, but yeah. it's taller. So it doesn't, it's not huge. I think if you compare it to like a lounge flight, it would feel huge maybe because sure. the two bags are so different in size, but mm -hmm. like I could fit my, I think it's 14 and a half inch monitor, my laptop in my backpack. I took the master I see on my oh. trip that I just took this last week. So yeah. it can fit a little, a little bit larger stuff. So we made that one for the guys, but a lot of women, I mean, obviously most of our customers are actually women and a lot of them were buying it because they could wear it and then they could hand it to their husband and he wouldn't be caught, you know, like embarrassed sure. yep. to wear yep. their Rapunzel lounge fly backpack or whatever, you know, <laughs> yep. it's not super foo-foo. And so they were using it as that and also as like a diaper bag. So sure. Yeah. A lot of women were using those bags and then sometimes they just need a little bit more space. Yeah. Cause I mean, there are times where I would almost overpack and a, and a master Gracie would be more my jam. It just depends on how you take the parks. And if you're a mom that's carrying stuff for your younger children, you just need more space in your bag period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that one was our second version. And then the park view bag was something I thought for someone who's kind of going to the parks, but they're mostly going to buy all their food there. They want to take a water bottle with them and they want to decorate their bag because they like, they buy pins and they want to use their pins and they wear Minnie Mouse ears and they want to take them off their head and store them safely. But they're not super into packing a ton of stuff. They don't need as much space. And I liked the idea of a crossbody bag for the ladies. And then I struggled with how I was going to do that and not be like a messenger bag. Anyway. So I came up with the shape and I was like looking at other bags that did similar things and it converts from a crossbody into a backpack and vice versa pretty easily. And I thought well, that's what we need. So you can kind of change your mind without having to change your bag. 
the and so we have to yeah. talk about the park view because that yeah, is my yeah. newest one. <laughs> That's your newest and one. And I am obsessed. I am so yeah. obsessed with it because it still has the wonderful space, like you said, for the pins. You've got that and mm-hmm. you've got that little pocket on the front. You still have the little buckle thing that you can put your ears on. So if your head needs a break or what I like, I love it for when we go on attractions, I can make sure my ears are secured and not have to yeah. put it in the pocket and hope that I don't forget them. I've never done I always that. Forget it. Yeah. I've never oh, actually no. forgotten them, but I always have That's this. Good. Like, I left paranoia. my phone once Did you? in the pocket. Oh, no. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I always tell my son on my kids, I'm like, don't use the pocket. It's not <laughs> because the pocket's bad. It's because I'm bad at right. remembering I put something in the pocket. Because you just went it. on this wild, crazy, fun ride. And that is yeah. not where your brain is when you're getting and off. And I never <laughs> use it. So I'm like, it's definitely not in there. Oh, no. Yeah. It's on Thunder <laughs> oh, no. Mountain Railroad. It was definitely Luckily, there. the people are so wonderful at Disney Parks mm-hmm. and somebody turned it in. So, oh, that's I, and I didn't get far. <laughs> <laughs> I realized quite quickly that it was in there. But yeah, so the Parkview bag is one of our newest ones Mm -hmm. and then yeah well and the the converting thing is yeah i didn't so i i love i love backpacks that's my thing i was like i don't i don't know if i like before i got i'm like you know i'll just probably i'll just wear it as a backpack it's gonna be a smaller version of my park view this i'm just gonna wear it as a backpack oh no do you know how often i was swapping back and forth because like if you're in say like a line or Mm -hmm. some sort of tight space. It was just so much easier to have that thing kind of like on your hip or you could even slide it in front of you as a crossbody and not feel like you were taking up too much space. You know, like if it was a tight situation and you kind of didn't feel like you're going to whack people with it. You can, yeah. (laughs) Tag was so excited because he's like, wait, I don't have to hold your bag while we're standing in line and you need to get into it now. I said, nope, I can hold it myself. Yeah. (laughs) And and the other opens, big thing, too, uh, yeah. yes, and it opens mm-hmm. really wide. The other big thing that I didn't even realize was going to be like such a wonderful thing. You get to give your shoulders a break. You get to mm-hmm. give your back a break and just like maybe, I don't know, feel the breeze on your back because you don't it's, have a bad yeah, back. Yeah, it airs it out. <laughs> it's, yeah, there's so many. I'm like, I did not think I was ever going to. And actually, my favorite part is seeing people in the park watch me zip it between the two different functions yeah. or the two different wear styles and they just look at you like what what did you just do They're what like, just happened what just happened yeah. right now it's like you performed magic yeah. in front of their eyes yeah brilliant and yeah we put i put a reel together steve and i were we were at disneyland like last month and i said let's just get a reel really quick. i'm terrible at having him stop and get content i am like the worst i'm always I, not in the I, mood i understand yeah <laughs> or you so get I'm distracted like, because ugh. you're at disney <laughs> Yeah. And I have ideas all the time and I'm just like, oh, I don't want to film that. <laughs> so we were at the park the very last day we were in Toontown. We were just going on Mickey and Minnie's and I said, just get a quick video really fast of me showing you how it's a backpack and then it's a crossbody and how you can do that really fast. And he's like, okay. So he filmed it. And then I have a girl that works for us part-time. She's in the Philippines and she takes all of our content and she makes basically everything you see on Instagram. Charmaine, Shout out to you. You make she makes all our content awesome. for our stuff. Cause yeah. I suck so bad at content. And so anyway, she creates this little reel. And I was like, why do we have so many followers all of a sudden? Like we just have had a little boom of followers the last couple of weeks because it's got like 300,000 views wow. on this. Because people are like, wait, what? Yeah. And, and we had a couple of videos like that earlier in our business because they were amazed at the net. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, it's it's a whole thing. And I didn't put a net on that bag because I thought as a crossbody, it would look really weird. Sure. Like, oh, sure. Just yep. hang down. It would just be like it, yeah, never yep. ending. Yep. That makes sense. And, and not all bags need to have all the features, but the main ones are there. And I love that you can open it super wide. It's got those gussets on the side to keep mm-hmm. your bag from falling. Like it keeps it together. So it doesn't mm-hmm. fall like open and flop everywhere, but it keeps your stuff from falling out everywhere also. Yes. And other bags are so tight and so small that it's hard. It's like a bottomless pit that you can't ever access. And so this way you can actually see what's in the bottom of your bag, which is kind of a miracle. I'll tell you, I, that's what I just took. That's that's my park bag this for the year. Cause when we went to Walt Disney world Mm -hmm. earlier in the year, that was the first time I used it. And then this last Disneyland trip, that's what I brought. And 
I could fit my spirit jersey in there. So I was mm-hmm. worried about not having space for, like you said, you know, you need the yeah. you need a layer in the morning and the evening. So I was worried. I'm like, what am I going to, I don't know if this is going to work or not, but nope. My spirit jersey was able to, it, I mean, it was just roll pushing, it, it was pushing the bag <laughs> with my water it. bottle in there, but it worked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can kind of cheat the inside pocket. So it's kind of, there's a pocket in the middle that kind of mm-hmm. keeps it together. And you can kind of push it to one side or the other because it's bendable. So you can just make it work for you. But my yeah. mom took it to Disney World. I gave her one as her Mother's Day gift. Aww. She's been asking me for one. And so... We, when we went to Disney World, she got to sport one of our bags, and it was really fun running around with her. And yeah, so uh, she really loves it as a purse, just for all her sure, stuff. Yes, yeah. it's, it's really convenient, and the top handle is really cute and fun, easy to carry it by that also. Mm-hmm. And you can make it really kind of a short crossbody and wear it as just a shoulder bag. There's just so many different ways to configure it. So yes, yes. I love that one. And I just need to make it in a lot more colors. It's just every time I think of a color, I have to buy like hundreds of them. You yes, know? So, yeah, so you need to be committed to the each color. Yeah. That and people are like, why don't you make this color? And I'm like, I wish I had a hundred thousand dollars sitting in my bank account. To yeah, do that, I wish I could make I all of the colors. Really, really. We yeah, do. <laughs> I really do. But we have to be really strategic about how yeah. we buy our inventory. But, um, so those are our three bags that we have. And then I'm coming, I came up with a belt bag, kind of a fanny pack. Mm-hmm. And I've been fighting with, I love my husband, but we disagree sometimes because I'm a girl and he's a guy and we're just different. And I've been seeing how fanny packs were so popular for the mm-hmm. last few years. But as a child of the eighties, it seemed <laughs> like I was going back and I wasn't progressing as a human being. If I was to wear a fanny pack, like I really yes, felt like, yeah. This is, this is something that you would do if you were a dork in the eighties, like, no. (laughs) So I've been fighting it forever. Mm -hmm. And I just started making samples. I started designing how I would want it to be. And he didn't know about it. (laughs) And then I was like, oh, that's just the sample that I ordered. And he's like a fanny pack. Really? You always said you hated them. And I'm like, I've been using one when I take the dog on walks. And I've been using one when we go to like on a short trip around and so he's like fine but then he saw how many customers have been excited about this Mm -hmm. and i think he's coming around to the idea you let him know you've got another one here that's very excited about this that's gonna be i I think that's gonna be my summer park bag now because then i won't need to have to yeah put a a whatever jacket or something yeah i know it'll be so fun and it really holds a lot so my husband goes it's way too big and i'm like it's actually not that big the jumbo ones are kind of popular, but I couldn't make it tiny because what would be the point? How would that be any different than everything else that's yeah, out there? You really, need, you need something for if it's a park bag, it needs to be able yeah. to hold more than just like your phone and your like yeah. little car water and thing. one granola bar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. And like a chapstick. Because it's funny when people are like, I can fit so much in my lounge fly. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to shade on lounge fly. I love their brand and I think they have a really solid place in what they do. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, wait, you're putting like a tiny, a tiny sunscreen and a tiny, like one chapstick and one granola bar. And you've got like a water bottle. It's 12 ounces. And you, you know what I mean? Like you can yeah. get all those things. They're all miniaturized. Cause really you can't, I don't know. You can fit all the stuff, but it's really hard to access all of it when it's so crammed in there. You know, you yeah. have to take the whole thing apart. So anyway, we, the fanny pack is called the single rider, which I thought I was a genius when I came up with that name. I felt like that's exactly like you're just by yourself. Like you're not taking care of. Yeah. (laughs) You're not taking care of a bunch of little kids and, and wearing a fanny pack and you could, but, and I also thought, you know, if you're a mom and you have a stroller to put all your stuff in, do you want to leave your ears in your stroller? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to leave your wallet in your stroller? No, you don't. You need to carry some of those more important things on your person when you leave that stroller and you go off into a hour long line. So, and then of course we thought of all kinds of things we could add to it. Right. So we've got the pin pocket, but we also have a built-in wallet in that pocket with RFID oh. lining so that if some weird scammer is standing next to you in line and they want to try to swipe your information, they can't because all your cards are protected. 
I was like, why not just add that? I don't know. That's awesome. Seems like fun. Yeah. And then also there's a pocket with like a, a, a little clip inside the pocket at the bottom and it goes, you can put like, hard to describe it, but you can put your Minnie Mouse ear headband into this pocket oh, kind of halfway yeah, yeah. and clip it down so that it, the ear part and the bow part sticks up out of the pocket a little bit just mm-hmm. to give a little bit of that flare, but it's totally secure in your bag. Perfect. And then you can use that pocket for something else if you want. It's lined with our really soft suede lining that we've been using on our bags in the last few batches. You you need to try one of our rope drops from our new manufacturer. They are <laughs> so much better than our first ones. We've gotten to update them a bit. So it's exciting. Yeah. Well, the 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 park view's got that suede inside. Yeah, yeah. Tag's obsessed yeah. with it. He would be like He's like, your bag is just so soft. <laughs> I know. And the Master Gracie has a suede great. lining too. Ooh. Tig, if you don't know, Tig has a, had a hard time wearing our first version of yes. our bag, the Master Gracie, because his shoulders are so narrow. Mm-hmm. They're so sloped. Mm-hmm. It's just his body. It is so hard because you've designed a backpack and I try to design it for everybody, but it's impossible yeah, to design it, it for every single body. And we try to be really inclusive. But it's so hard to <laughs> to meet all those needs. But I love that the fanny pack, we made our strap that goes around. It adjusts pretty big. And then you can also remove it and put a different one on. If you if you are not able to fit the, the one that comes with your bag, you can make it work for you. That's There's awesome. tons of other like straps you can buy. I was going to have one made that would go with the bag that you could buy as an option. But our manufacturer told me that I had to buy like basically hundred of them if I bought a hundred backpacks and I was like, I don't know if I could sell one of these to everybody and just right. have a bunch of straps left over. Honestly, you can go on Amazon. Any I try to not make anything that you could just go buy the exact same thing on Amazon. And so like if somebody else already makes it, just go right, buy it from yeah. them. I don't want to deal with producing it. <laughs> you've got you've got enough going on with all I've of the things you're creating. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like just Please just buy it there. You're good. But I wanted it to kind of swivel with your body based on where you want to wear it and not be kind of pigeon like you're sure. not stuck yeah. with it just in one position. And then there's a ton of pockets. It's got that suede lining. We have a clear pocket in there for some of your things you just don't want so to have security you need to go through. They can just see all your little things that are in that clear pocket. And then we have one of those key fob things. So it's like on a stretchy cord to oh, hold your mm-hmm, keys. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're traveling, if you cars nowadays, the new ones, those keys are like 500 bucks. So if you lose that key, also, if you're in a rental car or you're on vacation, the last thing you need is to like lose the key to your car somewhere. That's just not fun for anybody. So just has a little clip just for funsies. And then it's really padded on the back of it so that when you wear it against your body, it's really comfortable. That was important to me. So anyway. Yeah. Very nice. It's going to cover all the bases. I've taken it to the parks for a day. I also took it to a local theme park before I decided to do the bulk order of it to test it out to make sure that was the right size I wanted and things like that. So, you know, it's just really hard to own this business where I have to go to like theme parks. And, <laughs> I feel like, like oh, go must Disneyland. I go test this product at Disneyland to make sure others will enjoy <laughs> you know? it at Disneyland? Yes. <laughs> it is it, the truth. It's so hard. <laughs> These first roll problems, man. <laughs> <laughs> too, oh, yeah. too funny. And then I noticed that there's something else that's new on your website, too. It's oh, more yeah. For those those of us that have to travel to the parks, and yes. we have to be very conscientious that we don't crush our very precious ears. You. It looks like you've got some sort of like almost like luggage piece now, too. Yeah, I know. Cause, <laughs> cause I, I just, I, I have so many ideas. If I could go crazy, I really would. But for the longest time, like when we travel, now that I go to the parks with my whole family and all of us have to have ears on our backpacks because we are a designer park company and that's what we do. <laughs> so I end up taking a lot of Minnie Mouse ears with me and those suckers are expensive. Okay. So yeah. you don't want to take them and have them all jacked up in your suitcase. And I like to, I think it's fun to have a cute little herring case for them. And there are some other people that make cases similar and there are some others out there. I just thought, okay, I'm going to make the case that I wanted. So I put like half of the case has a mesh 
lining thing that you can zip up. So if you had a bunch of loose items, you could put that in those things in that side of your suitcase. And then the other side has those little elastic straps that can hold them down. And then the handle on top folds pretty flat so that you can get it right into your suitcase without it taking up a lot of space because space and weight, those are your like, yes, the, the deal breaker. Yeah. You, you need to be able to fit a lot of stuff in your suitcase. And it, funny, I brought it to Disney world and I was going, well, I brought it on my trip to, to Florida yeah. with, to see my parents and I filled it with Minnie Mouse ears. Plus I filled all of my rope drop bags that I brought with Minnie Mouse ears because <laughs> I put them in the, in the front pocket, not the pin pocket, but the one right behind it. Yes. I mm-hmm. put, you can put a pair um, of ears sideways in that pocket. So I put the ears in that one too, because I just need options. Okay. I don't know what mood I'm going to be in. I don't know what outfit <laughs> I'm going to want to wear. And then when I came back from Florida, I had gone to the beach with my mom a couple of times and I collected a bunch of seashells and they're really fragile. And I was yeah. like, where do I put these in my bag? What do I put them in so they don't break? And I put them in between all my Minnie Mouse ears in my suitcase. <laughs> And I just put some like like soft things over them, some shirts, and just kind of packed it, and it they came out great. So Smart. randomly, you might go to the parks, and you might want to bring something back that's fragile, mm-hmm. and it's kind of nice to have a hard suitcase you could put it in that's not your big suitcase. You're not just praying that that thing you got at the crystal shop isn't going to break. You know, it's it's a little extra option, but. Or the other thing, yeah. that the fragile things that Tag and I tend to bring back are like food related. So mm, like yeah, Jarrow coffee like, or something. Candy cane. It's yeah. a candy cane. Yeah. You just you spent way too much time trying to get that candy cane. <laughs> I still have one I haven't opened from last Christmas. Do I should you? probably yeah, I mean, open that. They're sucker. beautiful though. You can just you can just have that one as a decoration yeah. forever. Maybe it'll just go on a table or something. I don't know. We learned yeah, so we did learn that like if the the Sooner you eat it from when you get it, the better they are. Okay, they're better, soft. Yeah, probably. They're just like much yeah. softer. They harden with time, which I mean makes sense. Which yeah. is why every, I think every year the candy canes are made like all year long and then they sell them. So they're not fresh, fresh when you get them at Christmas time. But yeah, I I got two of them because my husband told me I should and I should have just bought one. <laughs> We're learning that with that and with French fries. We always get more French fries than we need everywhere we go. And so I'm like, don't order extra fries. We already, we're, 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 good. We were, we're not going to eat them. Yeah. We, I just kind of wanted a suitcase that was cute. And I thought I'm going to get a sample made. And then I thought I'm going to get a whole shipment made. <laughs> My husband's like, okay, lady, he's, he's very understanding. Now that we've been doing this for a little while, I think he has more faith in the fact that we do have a good product and we have really great customers and it, it all works out. <laughs> you you guys have a great product there. It's unique and it fills the need for so, so many people, mm-hmm. you know, so it's just, it's just, yeah, it's just a win, win, win all around. And the fact that you're coming out with, you know, you didn't just stop at the rope drop. You found, found needs for, Oh, actually, you know, we need this too, because what if yeah. you've got this going on? So the master Gracie, was born and then the park mm-hmm. was born and now pretty soon the single rider is going to be be here before we know it too so it's just yeah it's incredible it's exciting i remember I mentally trying to tell myself teresa you cannot go down this rabbit hole because you how many bags does one need to go to the park that you go to less than like a handful of times a year you don't need yeah a million bags this is well, not necessary <laughs> Well, here and I you're am. Like, but I, you're like, but I'm going on a VIP tour. And so therefore I must have a plaid bag. <laughs> the plaid, VIP that tour. actually the plaid bag was <laughs> all about like the holiday time. I'm like, I need yeah. a plaid bag for the holidays. I need it's it. It's true. And I think this year we're going to do something for the holidays. I think it'd be fun to color block something or I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I need to be better at planning ahead of time. I actually should probably start planning for Halloween right now. So... <laughs> Well, we know what you we're doing, what you're doing later to know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? You're sitting down with a hundred sample books. You should see the amount of random leather samples and things I have. It's I kind of silly, I but it. it's, it's just fun. it's wild because the other thing too that I th- don't think we talked about for this episode, but we talked about it the first time you were on, was you had shown us that first time kind of yeah. part of the designing process and how since you are working with a manufacturer that's on the other side of the world. They would send you 
these like paper, like paper, these things that you could print out that you could cut to then kind of construct the bag to help yeah. visualize. And I just was just baffled to think like that this just kind of these things were in your head to then become I physical know. designs that were these cut out paper things that you had to construct mm-hmm. to then be the finished product. And now you get to like go to the parks, see people wearing and, and enjoying and finding so much like joy, value, whatever you want to call it in the bags that you created yeah. out of just you yourself being like, there needs to be something. Let's figure this out and just go. And it's just amazing. Totally. <laughs> I know. And then we have a water bottle that connects with our hydration. Oh, yes. We've just added so many things as we've grown it, just kind of mm-hmm. looking around and saying, how can we make this better? Because I think, and, and it's a struggle for my husband, because he's like, how do we come up with a better version of something? Won't everyone else that's bought the first version feel cheated that we now have a better version? And I'm like, no, it's like the iPhone. That's they true. change it every year. And nobody's like, Ugh, I bought an iPhone you know, two years ago, and now it's better. They're just like, I'm so glad you made it better. You know, mm-hmm. that's, yeah. that's it. That's, we're not trying to, uh, I mean, obviously... People can feel how they want to feel about anything. So you can't worry about what everyone's going to think about these things because then you'll never do anything because somebody's going to get offended because that's just the, that's just life. Yeah. Like you uh, said, yeah. even with like designing bags, you don't know exactly how everyone's shoulders are sloped. So it's kind of mm-hmm. as much as you would love to be able to make it work for absolutely everyone. It's just yeah. sometimes... That's just not not possible. So but I just I don't think especially with what you guys are doing, you guys are you guys are improving as you find improvements. It's not like Mm -hmm. you're sitting on it and waiting and then you're like, all right, well, now we're going to release this one. You know, yeah, yeah, (laughs) not like that at all. And I hear a lot of I wish you'd put plastic over the pins and I get it. I get it, people. Plastic over the pins. There are pin. There are these ITA bags. There are these bags that people use when they're pin, really into yes. pin collecting. Yep. And I get it, but I feel like they all look so cheap and plasticky, and like, like you can buy them on Amazon, and then they kind of fall apart. I don't want a product that looks inexpensive. I want it to be a, a like a nice mm-hmm. staple piece. And and to me, when you put the plastic over it, it kind of cheapens it, and so. I've tried, I have a sample that I made with plastic over it and I've tried to wrap my brain around it. And it's like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I, well, and it's, and just, it's different because yeah. your pins are not, or the pins for yeah. the park, the designer park co bags are just kind of like just a decor piece. So yeah, I like never put like my charm prized, I don't put my prized possession pins on there because. Right. I don't like something might happen to them. So I just I just put the fun ones on there that bring me joy versus, Mm -hmm. you know, I feel like the plastic ones are kind of right. You're trying to protect your special pins. And who knows? We have we started with one bag and now we've gotten how many? Four? Yeah, four. Four bags. There could be down the road just one that's just a show off your pin bag because it totally we have the we have the functional bags now maybe maybe we can shift and the design will be more about like just fun over function you never know Mm -hmm. yeah there totally could be (laughs) i yeah i never say never because i mean i'm making a fanny pack and i never thought that was going to happen two years ago so there's there's always room for change and figure figure stuff out so for you debbie what is your favorite bag that you've come out with or maybe what's the one that you're most proud of just because maybe it took a little bit extra or there was something about it that just made you feel a little I don't I don't want to say connected but just kind of like we really worked hard to make this happen so it happened so you know that Mm -hmm. sort of thing do you have I don't want to say a favorite but do you do you have a favorite yeah I think we all (laughs) have favorites we won't tell our children who our favorite (laughs) child is it just changes based on the day like how they're acting. No. And I've taken all of the bags to the parks. So I've tried all of them, but my rope drop is still my ride or die bag. And it's still our most popular bag, even when we put out new ones. So, I mean, probably just because that was the first one I created and I went through all the turmoil with that one. I was on vacation in Las Vegas and I had to run to Walmart and buy a ruler with the metric with centimeters because I just couldn't figure out 
I wanted the hydration hole to be a little smaller and they couldn't understand <laughs> how big I couldn't understand how big I wanted to tell them to make it. Sure. So I needed a ruler and I didn't <laughs> have one. And so I was like, I mean, this is just, that was just how that went. It was a lot of, a lot of weird late nights where I was trying to make a mold out of paper to show them like, this is why I need this pocket to do this. Cause they just didn't understand. Sure. And like in the master Gracie bag, <laughs> I asked them to make the strap on the front a little shorter to have it sewn up to the bag. I can't really describe it, but there's a little stitch that we had to add because I asked them to sew it to the bag a different way. And they just thought they knew better than me and they didn't do it. And manufacturers often don't understand the reasoning behind my, my insanity, (laughs) but I'm very particular as to why I want something the way I do. And they just didn't do it. And so I found out when We had gotten a couple of our bags sent to us early and I saw that they hadn't added that and they were about to package them up (gasps) to ship them to me. And I was like dying yeah, because I'm like, these Minnie Mouse ears are going to fall out of this front front strap. Yeah, They're going to land somewhere and they're going to lose their ears and it's going to ruin someone's trip. And I can't have this. And I just, I was dying because we had taken the sample with us on a trip to the parks and my husband had put some Mickey Mouse ears in that strap and they had fallen out while we were in line for small world. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this doesn't work. What are we going to do? And so I, right at that moment started texting with our manufacturer and sending her pictures and explaining to her what I needed her to do. And she was like, yeah, it's early enough in the production. I can have that changed. And then when I got that bag, I was like, are you kidding me? So they went in and they added this little stitch and they had to do it after the fact, which I wasn't super happy about, but it works great with what they were supposed to do. But that's just like one of the many things that come up as you're creating a product and just things don't always pan out the way you really intended them to. And sometimes we go on one of these trips and I say to my husband, this is such a waste of time and money. Like we've been so many times, I don't need to do this to know whether my bag works or not. I, you know, I could just walk around the block. I could take a little hike up in the woods and be like, this is good enough. But it's spending that time in the parks and looking around and using it the way it's supposed to be used that we find, oh, this little thing could be a little bit different. And then it's like, to me, it just paid for itself when I was able to figure out why, you know, that that strap wasn't going to work the way it needed to. And I needed to make that change. That was like eye-opening for me. And there's always something like that that comes up with every trip that I go, oh, we could do this. So <laughs> or, I mean, ooh, this, good, it, if this was shifted just in this, you know, mm-hmm, over just this yeah. much, it would make this big difference. And da, da, da. yeah, exactly. That. And that's just how it is. But I didn't realize that this is a thing. And, and I turned 40 right when I started this business. And that's kind of what I think I just said to myself, it's now or never, you just do it. Just yeah. do the thing that you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't realize that I had this thing where I can't visualize things in my mind. So I can't see if I, if you said, think of a purple elephant, I can't see a purple elephant. Mm. I don't see anything in my mind. And so the fact that I was able to construct this creation out of thin air in some aspects without being able to visualize it ahead of time, I was just like, this is crazy that, that we were able to do this, but it was meant to be. It needed to exist for some people. And, you know, I just felt led to do it for the last like 14 years. And so I'm finally doing it. But yeah. Well, and you can tell your parks fans, specifically Disney parks fans. So you can tell that these these have been crafted with a lot of thought and a lot of love. And there's there's a reason, like you said, there's a method behind the madness of Mm -hmm. all of the different little quirks and things that people may not understand but there's there's reasoning behind it and really truly only a park fan could be the one to design a park bag because you know what you need when you're in that space it's just different you know it's just different so it makes it just even stuff like when i show people the 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 fact that you've got the little hole in the back so that your hydration tube can come out people are just like what and the fact that it's got the little flap so then like I don't know. They yeah, like it that it's kind of closed. It when you don't yeah, need it's, it. it's closed yeah. when you don't need it. And even stuff like, oh, you can have your phone charging brick in yeah. the bag with the cord hanging out if you want to still be able to ha- like hold your phone while it's charging. And just 
all of those little things, I, you know, it just it really shows. Like it was a labor of love. I'm sure it was a lot of headache and long <laughs> nights, as you were saying, especially with the time change. But I think you guys made something that's really, really, really special. Yeah, it's been super awesome. We had this super, super crazy experience at Disneyland on our last trip because I've been I've been wanting to get Disney licensing on our products since the beginning. I am super not jealous, but when I see other companies, they're able to put cute Mickey Mouse and Minnie yeah. Mouse on things. I'm like, I wish so bad that yeah. I could do that. Yeah. But we we made it a conscious choice at the beginning of our company to not use the word Disney on our products anywhere. Like we don't call them Disney the Mickey Park Mouse, whatever, Disney yep. Park. Yeah. The, the name of it is, it's just the rope drop or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we don't put characters on our products and stuff trying to, trying to use that Disney edge. And a lot, there are a lot of creators out there that use the Disney intellectual property illegally, and that's on them, but we choose not to. So I, I'm still, you know, always, always working towards that licensing, but we, we actually met with somebody from Disney when we were in line for the Matterhorn. It was kind of like kismet or something. Yeah, it right hasn't place, turned right into, time. yeah, it hasn't turned any, into anything quite yet, but we made a connection with somebody who works in intellectual property with Disney and they have emailed somebody else who's in charge of global merchandising for the Disney company to t- share with them our products. And so I know that someday we'll be in the place where you'll be like at the world of Disney store and you'll look over and there'll be some park view bags or, you know, yeah, park view bags or single riders or rope drops or, you know, we'll be in the store someday. We're just biding our time. And I'm not a patient person. I like to just <laughs> think I could just work myself to the thing I want, but we were just in line for the Matterhorn and we were hanging out in the single rider line. And these, these cute couples behind us, we were just talking to them about how the line was work, working its way kind of slowly to the ride. And so we, we were laughing about how people were leaving the line in front of us. And that was how we were going to get our way into <laughs> onto the cars because everyone was going to leave and we were just going to wait them out. And then my kids started talking to them and turns out like they said, oh yeah, we got in because because he works for Disney. And I was like, oh, what do you do for Disney? And he goes, I'm I'm in IT. And I that's what I thought I heard him say. You know, it's kind of loud when yeah. you're in line. Can't always understand. And he's from Spain. So you know, I, I thought I said it and I was like, Oh, and then he goes, no, I said, Oh, so you do like web design and stuff. He goes, no, I'm an IP. And I was like, what? And then I almost fell over like (laughs) onto the ground. And I said, that's so funny because I actually make these park bags. And he said, wow, we were admiring them (laughs) while we were in line and seeing how smart they were. And I just, I, and he said, tell me about your product. And so I kind of showed it to him and he goes, this is, uh, this is so amazing. These need to be sold in the parks. And I said, yeah, I would love that. And then he said, you know, I don't work in that department, but I could totally see these being sold in the parks. And I'm going to get, I'm going to give you my email address and I want you to email me and send me over some stuff and I'll get it to somebody. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I said, yeah, and I can mail you some so you can see the quality. And he goes, no, I can see the quality. You have the quality. And I was like, okay. So (laughs) You know, it's, it's just all those little tiny things that line up Yeah, and, you know, it might not be this meeting, but it was me seeing that somebody else within the company can yes. see my product and yes. see that it is great for the parks. And so sometimes you just need to build your confidence because you feel like everything's just going about its way and it's not going fast enough or like, I want to see progress. Incredible. And, you just Stuff never happens. know. You never know who <laughs> you, you might know. meet in the line of the Matterhorn or the yeah. Rise of the Resistance or wherever it may be. You don't know. While you're waiting. You just never <laughs> know. That's incredible. Incredible. Yeah, so Disney magic right there. Disney and magic. And it's like purest form right there. Right I know. place, right time. It's true. Amazing. And the, you know, those people, were, those are my people. It's like, I don't know. I said that to my mom when we were watching Phantasmic. I was like, these are my people. <laughs> it's like, okay. Calm down. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. There's yeah. a reason when you get Disney fans together, it's hard to to get them back apart because we just are we're just so passionate about the same thing. And yeah, there's just not like especially for like me living in the Midwest or like you maybe you know when you're not right yeah, next to the park, right there. It's not like it's it's everybody. So then it feels even more special because you really feel like you're connecting with someone because you're like, oh, we have this shared amazing. Like we love this. Yeah. Thing. 
So yeah, I, yeah. I get it. I get it. It's Amazing. True, so. so Debbie, yeah. is there anything that we haven't covered that you would like to talk about? I do have, I do, I might start making some Minnie Mouse ears. I have a manufacturer that I've been working with to get some samples made. Look at you. And they make ears for the parks in Tokyo and for the some companies that sell within Hot Topic oh, and wow. Box Lunch that yeah. you might have seen. Yeah. So they make actual Disney ears because I've had some made in the past. We we did a show locally here in Utah. It's for people that like Pinterest and stuff. So it's very sure. crafty. Yeah. And it's it's been really successful for us every year. And this year we've doubled our booth size and we're kind of going in for that. But Last year, we brought some Minnie Mouse ears that we had bought that were just, you know, they were a little smaller than the ones you find at the parks, but not tiny. They were really cute, but not the same quality, essentially, that you would get in the parks. They were also much cheaper to purchase than the ones in the parks. But so I don't know. I've been toying with the idea of putting some of our products on Amazon. And it's so hard because you have to list your product with nothing on it. So I can't list Mm. my bag and show what it can do. It has to be just plain. And I don't know if a person would just look at it and go, oh, I, I know that that's a hydration bag. Like that's right. just not going to come to their mind because it's kind of, it's kind of covert. So it is it's like, a little undercover if you don't have it, it really all, is. If you don't have it all yeah. decked out. <laughs> They're like perforated hall, holes. Cool. Like yeah. I don't know a pin could <laughs> like, go on is, that. Yeah. It's, why is that? Why is that pocket breathable? Or, you know? <laughs> I, yeah. They're like, is that air conditioning? I'm not sure. <laughs> so yeah, I I keep toying with the idea of making some. And I told Steve I really wanted a booth at D23. And no. they never contacted me. And that's fine. I think part of it is that we do make a product that would compete with products they sell in the parks from other companies that they do a lot of business with them currently. And so we wouldn't want to look like we're stepping on anyone's toes. And and my intention is not to not to, you know, take over their business. I think that there's space for all of us in yeah. the same place. I think there's plenty of business for all of us, if that makes sense. So I think it makes sense. Yeah. And we all offer different things and we're just, we have different customers and that's totally good. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating when you're, when you're like, I would be the perfect person to, for you to bring into this, like bring Mm -hmm. me in and then you don't get, you don't hear back, but you know, sometimes you just have to keep pushing forward, even when it feels like it's, it's, you know, sad that it's not working out the way you anticipated it working, but yeah, <laughs> you'll never know the time. The time is not the right. Just is right. Important. Yeah. yeah timing's exactly. important. And for some reason, it's just not the right time yet. Exactly. And I tell <laughs> myself that all the time when I'm like, <laughs> why don't you call me back? But you know, there's, there's gotta be a reason. And yeah. Well, Debbie, where can people find you and find all of these amazing functional and fun bags and various products. Sure. We are on Instagram. We're at designer park co and on Facebook, I believe we're the same. Our website is designerparkco.com or designerparkcompany.com. And then we just are basically on those platforms. We're on TikTok essentially. I don't really go on there. I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what you'll find. Somebody came up to me last year at our booth and said that we had no online presence at all whatsoever. And I was like, rude. I have some followers on Instagram. <laughs> like, but, you know, I, I have I'm, people, I swear. Yeah, I was <laughs> like, sorry. We're also on Pinterest too. You can find us there, but mostly just Instagram and our website. So, and if you subscribe to get our emails, we send out an email once a week, just telling you what we're up to. And then sometimes we have discounts and stuff on our emails, but it's also, we have these amazing affiliates. So companies like Deal Weekly, who are, you know, amazing to create (laughs) such content for all for all of us and don't really get paid for their hard work. It's nice to support them by using their affiliate link. And then they're able to get a little something for taking the time to refer you over to us. Well and plus the we'll take good you, care of yep, you. Plus if you use the code, which is just mm-hmm. DL weekly, we were very creative when coming up with the code. They, they get what, ten percent off the order? They get ten percent off, yeah. Yep, that's always good too. So then you have more money yeah. for more Disney stuff. <laughs> we don't really normally offer discounts bigger than that that often because believe it or not, our product actually does cost quite a bit to, to produce. So we don't have a super high profit margin on it, even though it is kind of a pricey product. 
we just choose to use a more expensive manufacturer, I guess. But yeah. So, but yeah, we love working with, with DL Weekly and we've got some other affiliates, but honestly, you guys were like our first ones. I think we had to figure out what in the heck it was like to sign up an affiliate. What an affiliate guys, was. Yeah. Yeah. We're like, I don't know. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. Just, we're just excited about you guys and your product. Like we were just excited about the yeah. product that we just like needed to share and tell other people about it because it was, yeah, you guys, you just, you found it, you found a niche need that other things just weren't quite filling. So it, it made perfect yeah. sense. Perfect sense. Yeah. Well, you know, we joined the DL Weekly family. Yes. It's, it's fun. That was the other thing, fun, that fun thing too, is that you were a listener before this fun yeah. and crazy adventure. So of course we're going to support our, our weekly tiers too. <laughs> well, Debbie, thank you so, so much for coming on and spending some time kind of catching us up as to what all's been going on over there at Designer Park Co. It's just like we kind of said in the beginning, it's just been like this whirlwind wild ride for you all over there. And we're just yeah. so excited. We're glad that we could take you guys along on the ride with us. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to support the show as a one-time payment? Well, guess what? You can. You can buy us a churro. <laughs> Head on over to dealweekly.net slash churro to support. Thank you for all of our listeners that have supported our show in any way possible. And that includes just simply listening. We appreciate you. Looks like we're coming in for a landing, gang. But please stay listening until trivia comes to a stop. And then you can walk to the nearest exit. Thanks for listening to the eighth wonder of the world. Dio Weekly. Welcome back to Trivia Land, where we are going to find out the answers to tonight's listener-submitted questions and see how Teresa did. Teresa, how are you feeling tonight? You know, I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'm going to say we did about the same as last week. You had a... Which was two and a half. You had a half one? And you had a, oh my goodness, you're so close one. Of course. Okay, so I got nothing. <laughs> I got let's, nothing. let's just officially see how you did. All right. Your first regular round question from listener ha hashtag Save Teresa's Trees. Picture this. You're on the Disneyland Railroad. You ride in the segment between New Orleans Frontierland Station and Toontown Station. You pass behind Big Thunder Ranch. On your right, there's a small building. Supplies. In front of the building is a little doghouse. What name is painted on the doghouse? You said Nugget. The correct answer <gasps> that I was looking for was Indiana. Yes. That's the reference. Indiana Jones is what makes me. Oh, dang yes. it. Brilliant. 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 Good question. Nugget would have been clever, too. Though. Nugget would be clever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Your second question from listener Chrissy A. How many parking spaces are in the Pixar Pals parking structure? I probably way undercut this. <laughs> you said 4,500. According to the Orange County Register, the correct answer is 6,500. And according to DisneyParks.go, the correct answer is 5,000. Yeah, okay, I wasn't too bad you, then. You came close. You came close. It wasn't too terrible. Yep. That is wild how different the how different Disney says it and the Orange County Register is reporting. Yeah, and I... And I figure like Orange yeah. County Register was probably going off of like building permits or yeah, something. I, was say, I, I wonder you know. if, if, yeah, the OC Register was more like it could be that many versus right. Disney saying this is how many parking spots we're using. Maybe like mm. it could hold like that's what the, I don't know, the footprint would be the max. Sure. And that's what the register reported. Yeah, register is like, saying Oh, yeah, they, well, we're only going to use like, we're going to use this section for these, you know, things that are not just public parking, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yep, hard to tell for sure, but but that was the answers that I found. So there are the answer provided and the answer found, and yep, there they were. So your third regular round question from listener Sarah P. Westcott would have been the first of its kind to have a hotel within the theme park. When the idea was scrapped and DCA was created, which hotel opened to coincide with this new park? You very confidently and immediately said Disney's Grand Californian Hotel and Spa. That, that probably means I'm wrong. Though. The correct answer that I was looking for was Disney's Grand Californian <gasps> Hotel and Spa. <laughs> Woohoo! 
I'm on the board. And your fourth and final regular round question from listener Eric D. In the Haunted Mansion attraction in Disneyland, there is a ghost that is seen blowing out candles on a cake, also known as the birthday girl ghost. The ghost face can also be seen four times on Pirates of the Caribbean. Describe the four appearances on Pirates. You said Carlos the Mayor being dunked in the well, the prisoner whistling at the dog holding the keys, and one of the guys with the red the pirate. Did I miss anybody that you said? No. I went back and forth, but that was my final answer. All right. The correct answer that we were looking for. That's behind him, but yeah. Ah. Anyways. The correct answer we're looking for is Carlos the Mayor being dunked in the well. A prisoner whistling at the dog holding the keys. Those the, are the only ones I was confident on, so whoo! The flutist playing oh! the music while Carlos is being dunked. Dang! And the official of Puerto Dorado waiting in line to be dunked. That Dang same it. face is three times in the same you know, scene. You know what's terrible? Is that that they the use face. the same face three times in no, one no, no, scene? No, no. That's what's terrible. The, 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 no, the thing that's terrible is that's what I was thinking. I was imagining that guy's scared face, but I thought that guy's scared face was with was red. With red. Oh. oh, I forgot what he would like. I could see the face, like sure. the scared expression, so, but not what the what he was wearing. Dang it! So you were looking for him? Yes. Yep. Yep. Cause that because I thought it was kind of this like. Ooh, you know, yep. looking up and kind of, uh-huh. thing, yep, but I that's, forgot the rest of what That's he the did. official of Puerto Dorado. I forgot yep. the, the rest he was wearing. And, I totally forgot about the flutist. And there's the flutist. Yep. Ooh, that was a great question. And honestly, I don't know if I would have known and that all of those there's... people, like that that was, that all of those, all of those characters were connected that way. I don't oh, know yeah. if I would have known that without well, someone... And especially when you look at the original, the Haunted Mansion mask, you put on that wig and you put on the blue face paint. It's 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 entirely different. Mm -hmm. Well, and even the, I mean, clearly the three characters in one scene have the same face, but you don't realize they have the same face. Yeah. Yeah. Just different facial hairs, different head hair. Do you want to know what else is crazy? I think something in the back of my brain may have known about the flutist because I kept thinking about the band singing Mm. Yo Ho, Yo Ho. Sure. I kept like that kept coming to my mind. I'm like, no, that's, nope, that's a different flutist yeah, tip. There isn't that face there, but that was like sticking in my head. And I kept talking to myself. Mm-hmm. About, that's, I wonder if my brain, it was in, it was engulfed or ingrained back there, but I just didn't know it. Yeah. Dang. So close. Yep. So I'll give you half credit for that one. Oh, that was very kind of you. Well, you got half of them. You deserved it. <laughs> Taking pity on me. This next one, you definitely took pity on me. You try to give me try to give me all the help I could get. I have no idea what you're talking about. Your <laughs> bonus question from listener Paolo D. In Disneyland's 50th anniversary parade, Walt Disney's Parade of Dreams, the fairy godmother, the blue fairy, and the fairies from Sleeping Beauty lead the opening unit. However, in the rare occasion that either the fairy godmother or the blue fairy were out, which character would take their place? The answer that you eventually came around to giving <laughs> was Merlin. <laughs> I want to see a photo the of The answer this. that I was looking for was Merlin. <laughs> wow, where did I ever come up with that answer on my own? I have no idea. <laughs> that was crazy. And we do have a YouTube link that I will be able to show you. It's, it's not, I have to copy and paste it. But yeah, we'll be able to check that out. But yes, um, actually a personal note from Paolo D. He saw this parade when he was a kid and actually had one parade where Merlin was in the fairy godmother's place. Crazy. Yep. So just to confirm, I wasn't completely wrong because Tinkerbell was part of that unit. She just didn't replace one of the other characters because she was she was sitting on top of the a golden train. Oh, sure. That Peter Pan was inside. So she was... She was there. <laughs> she was there. She just <laughs> she wasn't just, replacing anybody. She just wasn't replaced. Yep. Sure. Yep. Well, listeners, how do you think Teresa did? How did you do listening at home? Do you think you've got that perfect question and you'd really like to hear it on the podcast someday? Feel free to send that in to us at dealweekly.net slash trivia. 
Well, we will be back next week with more Disneyland news and information. Until then, go out and enjoy the parks. And a special thank you to Sidel for editing the podcast. Please remain seated until the podcast comes to a complete stop and the doors have opened. Then collect your belongings, watch your head, and step carefully from the episode. On behalf of all of our crew, thanks for traveling with us, and we hope you have a happy and memorable visit here at DL Weekly.